Hello, I'm Dave, and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today I'm at the pretty village of Fontmel Magna in Dorset. It's located about four miles south of Shaftesbury and nine miles north of Blandford Forum. The A350 goes through the village. And we're going to be walking a roughly four mile circular-ish route We'll start off by exploring this quite delightful village and then head east, initially following the course of the Colliers Brook up to the Fontmel Down Nature Reserve. We'll have a quick exploration around Fontmel Wood, looking for some boundary stones, and then we'll head back west around Littlecombe Bottom and back to the village. Now I'm filming in the middle of April. It is a glorious spring day. The sun is out bit of blue sky, a little bit of wind, but uh, it should be perfect conditions for walking. Do come along with us. Well, we'll begin the walk with a little wander through the village, starting at the northern end. You can probably just see behind me the old war memorial. And if you look on a 1901 map, there was once a, a maypole here in the village. And indeed, I did find a, a very old picture that showed the, uh, the maypole. Unfortunately, that's now long gone. And just opposite the War Memorial is the Fontmel Village Shop and Post Office. And just to the left of the village stalls is the old Methodist Chapel, originally built in 1796 and made much larger in 1831. And I think it's one of the oldest functioning Methodist chapels in Dorset. Not 100% sure. Well, this is Watermill Cottage. And there used to be a water wheel here that drove machinery through a series of crankshafts to the old dairy across the road, which you can see there. Well, that's Moore's Farm, which dates from 1787. And I can hear the water gushing over the, uh, well, the, the edge of the, what must be the old mill pond. You can get a much better view of the mill pond itself from, um, the churchyard which is on higher ground but if I just walk over I might just be able to see the top a bit over the wall here yeah <laughs> and then just opposite Watermill Cottage there is well the Fontmill Brook a couple of ducks there the village name Font means spring and uh, well mole is, is bare hill and there's loads of springs around here and I think the brook eventually feeds into the river Star. Well let me tell you a little bit about the history of the village. Now Sir Frederick Treves in his 1906 book Highways and Byways in Dorset described it as and I quote the beautiful village of Fontmel Magna. It lies in a hollow by the side of Fontmel Brook and it is as pretty a spot as old cottages, old gardens and old orchards can make it. Now the village was actually owned by uh, Shaftesbury Abbey from 870 AD right up to the dissolution of monasteries in the 16th century. And at the time of the Doomsday Book there were three water mills here. In the 16th century, ownership of the manor and the village went to the Arundels and then in 1809, Richard Glynn bought it and that family were owners right up until the 1920s. Now, Sir Frederick Treves said of the church in the village, it was one of the handsomest in Dorsetshire, St Andrew's Church. And it's got origins to the 15th century, but uh, the only bit that remains from that time is part of the tower. Basically the whole church was rebuilt in 1862 and it consists of a nave, chancel, west tower, north and south aisle, a porch and a vestry. And I think it's got six bells. Now one thing that really does stand out in the churchyard is this magnificent large cross. And it's a memorial to a chap called Philip Salkeld I think that's how you pronounce his name. Um, he was actually born in the village in the, the rectory as he was the son of the rector here. And he was a lieutenant in the Bengal engineers, the Bengal army during the Indian mutiny. 
and he was actually awarded a, a Victoria Cross as a, a result of him showing bravery in desperate duty of blowing up the Kashmir Gate of the fortress of Delhi in India in broad daylight under a heavy fire of musketry on the morning of the 14th of September 1857. And he was badly wounded, actually had his thigh broken and his arm was shattered by a bullet. His arm was then amputated, but unfortunately he died from his wounds a few days later on the 10th of October 1857. He was only 26. I think he was actually buried at uh, the cemetery in Delhi. Well, we'll have a little peep inside. There are some folk doing some cleaning, the annual spring clean of the church, I've been told. So, we've got the church uh, font down here on the left. There's the, the tower, beautiful stained glass window. Uh, getting a really good view of it in the sunshine. And then just over here looks like there's a second font over on the side of the nave over there. And, well, you can never have too many fonts in a church. The third font, and this is the oldest one, as you can see his little um, sign there that says it was from the original Saxon church. And a quite magnificent pulpit there. Looks as though it's made of marble. And I love the little door behind which made my way into the chancel and there's the organ on the left hand side and another quite splendid uh, stained glass window above the altar. I guess that must be the last supper. And then look at the altar. I've not seen one quite like that. It's sort of lit underneath with um, looks like some lilies and ferns. Very pretty. And this lovely thatched house here, just almost opposite the church, is um, called Cleave Cottage. And I think it was the old bakery with uh, um, a lovely little thatched porch by the looks of things. And this is the, the village green. And just on the right there is a thatched house called Brook House. And uh, there was actually a, a cross tree here, a 250 year old elm tree that used to be say next to the village cross. And it was also known as the gossip tree. And I've seen some old pictures with folk sitting around it. And indeed it's where villagers used to congregate to gossip. The cross was actually removed in the 1860s. I, I think it was falling apart and the stones are now used in private gardens. Unfortunately, the tree fell victim to Dutch elm disease and was removed in the 1970s. And a lime tree was planted in its place in 1977 to mark the Queen's Silver Jubilee. And sort of just opposite the, the tree is Gossip Tree Cottage. And I was reading that there used to be a rifle club here in 1908. Indeed, a, a 1901 map shows an animal pound. That must have been perhaps where these little outbuildings are today. I'm not sure. A little wander into West Street. Now this building on the left here, I think used to be the old reading room. I've seen a very old picture of it, reputed to date from the 14th century, which would make it the oldest building in the village, but it looks as though it's been restored. And I have seen another old picture off the internet of this exact spot looking uh, down the, the street. And there, opposite the school, is Pump Cottage. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, yes, looks like the pump is still here with a little trough to one side and it's uh, protected by its own little thatch building. 
Now this is a, an interesting house it's called Cross House and it dates to the 16th century. Originally it was a rest house for travellers en route to the Abbey at Shaftesbury and it was later home to the Lord of the Manor, Sir Richard Glynn, who was founded the school and rebuilt the church. Well this little section quite near the A350 road that goes through the village. Um, you've got Millbrook House over to the left and there was a brewery founded here in 1780 and this actual building was the manager's house um, or Millbrook House anyway and that was attached and built in 1876. The brewery itself closed in 1904 and later was used as a flax mill and then next to where the brewery was is uh, the pub, the Font Mill, and it changed its name from the Crown in 2011. I think it's closed on Mondays, but as today is a Friday, I expect it'll be our final destination. Oh wow, isn't that beautiful over the other side of the road there? Collier's Cottage. I think it uh, dates to the 15th century and may well once have been a pub. Well, now making our way down Mill Street, which is sort of opposite the pub, which you can see over the road there. And the house here on the left, called the Old Coach House, well, it's, I think it's fairly new, even though it looks quite old. Um, built in uh, 2008 on the site of a, a garage or petrol station, which was formerly the stables and coach house for the pub. Indeed, I think I came across a very old photograph that uh, showed the old petrol station. And there's the stream again as we head eastwards. Actually, at this point, I think uh, it's called the Collier's Brook and no longer the Fontmel Brook. I'll tell you, this little brook, it really is quite enchanting and crystal clear water. And just come across a little sign that tells us that this was the site of the village sheep wash used until the 1930s. Indeed, it shows on a 1901 map. And indeed, I, I came across another old picture on the internet that showed the sheep wash in action at this very spot. <laughs> oh, wow. Now, I'm pretty sure that round about here, there used to be a mill called Middle Mill. It ceased to function in the 1880s and was burnt down in 1907. And there's just a, a mill pond which is uh, just up on the other side of that bank. And indeed there is what remains of the mill pond. Some gorgeous reflections of uh, the sun. Well, we're shortly going to be entering the Fontmel Down Nature Reserve, so we're gradually heading uphill. I thought I'd just uh, do a little pit stop to look at the view. And that is some um, sort of Fontmel Down uh, along the top there, the ridge. And then you've got this beautiful valley down below. So we're going to make our way so uphill towards that ridge at the top where those trees are. Just a little pit stop, just to catch my breath. I should say, um, when you come into the nature reserve here, there is a sign that asks us to keep dogs on leads. But this is a superb spot just to show you some more views. So this is looking over to the east. And so we're continuing a little uphill section. And this is Littlecombe Bottom, the, the, the valley down below. 
and then just panning across there's say Fontmel down in the distance. A little bit of a breeze up here now, hopefully you're going to be able to hear me okay <laughs> above the audio. And then just continuing to pan this, this quite glorious vista and then this is right round to the, to the west and there's the village below and you can see the, the church tower in the distance. Well, a little update on the route. I've uh, come out of the, uh, the nature reserve and just going to cross a little road that's going to take me into Fontmel Wood and I need to keep my eyes peeled for a boundary stone. Now regular viewers will know I struggle sometimes to find boundary stones. I think I found one. Certainly it shows on a, a very old map and indeed a, a current ordnance survey map. Should be one just about here. So this must be it. Now I can't actually get any nearer to it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it is a boundary stone covered in moss or it might be a tree stump covered in moss but I'm going to bag it anyway. Well, I'm heading south now through the wood and heading along this, this footpath. And what really is quite stunning because the footpath is literally covered in um, sort of wild garlic. Not quite got the smell just yet, but uh, intertwine as the odd bluebell as well. It really is quite idyllic. absolutely love this this track and path through these woods look at the bluebells here on the side they really are beginning to come into their own now especially as we've got some spring sunshine at last another little update on the route we've now left Fontmel Wood as we've been sort of heading along this track, um, I've been able to make out from time to time a bit of a, an old bank or dike. And indeed there are a couple of sections of old dike known as the Tennelly Ditch. The eastern section's about 320 metres long. Uh, the, the bank's about six metres wide and just under a metre high with a ditch on the north side. The western section is about 190 metres long and the bank's are a bit wider then it's about eight meters wide and again about a meter high and basically they're middle bronze age and probably just territorial boundaries well i've just come across a little bit of open area a perfect place for some whippet zoomies but not too many <laughs> cue the music Ah, this is one of those wow moments. Views across a beautiful Dorset countryside. There's Fontmel Magna down in the, the valley there. 
I'm very much on the homeward leg now. And, or just in front of me, look at the colour of that glorious yellow gorse. And I can almost smell uh, that sort of almond um, aroma which you get this time of year. Well, so now we're very much on the homeward leg. Looks like we're back into a little bit more of the nature reserve. So Logan's back on the lead. And well, I think we just keep heading westwards and I can see the village down in the valley below. Oh, well, sorry about this folks. Another pit stop. It's probably our um, final view. So that's looking to the north and you can just see Shaftesbury just over beyond the hill there and then this is panning back over towards um, Fontwell Magna. Now the rather impressive brick building down in the valley is uh, well what was the old rectory it was a rectory in the 17th century and that was then demolished in 1870 and a new one built in 1871 and it was still used by the clergy until it was sold in 1954 when it was renamed Fontmel House. Just one more view. <laughs> this is looking back over to the east and goodness, we were, just to think we were in those woods right over on the brow there. What a beautiful walk it's been. <laughs> a quick dip in the Collier's Brook before we pay a visit to the pub. That looks lovely and refreshing. Beautiful crystal clear water, isn't it? He says, oh, this is lovely, Dad. Well, folks, we've made it back to the Fontmel pub back in the village, which we've uh, visited purely for research purposes for the video. And here we are sitting in the, the beer garden. Just uh, quality test the ale. Oh, lovely Cornish, I believe. And of course, Crisp time, I think, what have we got? Tyrrells today, going up in the world. <laughs> well, we hope you enjoyed the walk today. We've certainly had a great time. The weather has been extraordinary. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy. Well, Chris, sir. Yes, Tyrrells. Oh, there we go. Oh, back to this.